it's my pleasure to introduce uh, Mr. Harris Zafar. Uh, he's the national spokesman for the Ahmadiyya Muslim community in the U.S. How'd I do? I practiced. Uh, he and his wife, Yasmin, and their three young children are a part of a mosque in Portland. Mr. Zafar graduated from the University of Oregon with a B.S. in computer science and business administration in 2001. In the same year in the aftermath of September 11th, Mr. Zafar, only 22 at the time, began to receive invitations to speak about Islam and the cause of peace. That has led in the interviewing years to his growing public role across the country. He has had the distinction of having been interviewed uh, by many well-known journalists and news anchors, including Wolf Blitzer, Megyn Kelly, and Bill O'Reilly. In the case of O'Reilly, it was less of an interview than an argument. <laughs> but Mr. Zafar uh, bested him. Uh, these years of speaking about Islam led to his remarkably clear and helpful book, Demystifying Islam, Tackling the Tough Questions. In the introduction, he talks about the many discussions of Islam he's had over the years in interfaith groups and the inevitable conflicts that have come up in those discussions and the way that he has been shaped by those who disagreed with him and challenged him. And he asks there in the acknowledgments God's forgiveness for any excesses on his part in those discussions and for God's blessing on those people who challenged him. That is a mark of a man of open uh, um, um, open and true man of faith. I uh, people are enemies of other people everywhere and are inflicting atrocities all around us. Terrorism is being carried out in the name of some perverted view of faith, and terrorism is being carried out in the name of stopping terrorism. Now, Islam comes in the spotlight often because of the actions of some Muslims. Um, and that's why it's important for us as Muslims to be very frank about that. When bad people do bad things, you have to call them out, regardless if their name sounds like ours or if they claim to be of the same faith. And this leads a lot of people to the question of whether Islam has any relation to peace uh, because of the actions of people like ISIS and Taliban and Hezbollah and Boko Haram, um, and you could take your variable pick of uh, these different groups. And there's a reason why Muslims uh, are so loud in condemning these acts of violence. Um, and we within the Ahmadiyya Muslim community could be a simple case study um, that to consistently and continually condemn these acts uh, because they're committed either in the name of our faith or uh, by someone whose name sounds like uh, our faith. Uh, and it's, we don't do it just because we're good people, we're decent people, or we live in fear in this country. Uh, it's because we cite Islamic grounds for condemning uh, the absence of peace and those who rob peace from those around us. Uh, it is a violation of Islam's commandments towards peace and the protection of freedoms. Feel free to disagree with any of the statements I'm going to make because sometimes I don't know how controversial they are. So. Um, I read a quote recently that really clicked very nicely into my own personal worldview in thinking about this stuff. The quote was that peace can't happen between parties until uh, power is balanced. And so um, when I look at um, the world, or at least uh, just America, and I think about power relationships, I see Christians as having more systemic socio-political power as uh, more than Muslims or Jews. And so um, if that is true, given that that is true, how can Christians share power with Muslims or Jews in their faith communities or individually? One thing I would add, because I think it's a great question, is um, I, mean, I think the lack of power extends beyond just uh, this characterization that Christians have power. I think that there are, um, the fact that we are in this room together uh, to want to learn from one another, yet the world is closing its ears to the fact that we're here. Uh, we did have one, uh, one media outlet here, I think it was a Spanish media outlet, um, but no one else, uh, to my knowledge. Um, 
that takes away our power to try to even out the, the narrative. Um, that there is, that we still have a right to call ourselves the United States of America. Um, whereas when you do turn on the television, it seems like a divided States of America. Um, and I think then really the way to, to tip the scales is to find a way to uh, give that platform to those that, um, to those that are in this room or on the stage that are calling people towards understanding. Um, I'm not here to convert anybody. Uh, I have the forms. If anyone sits down. <laughs> That's a bad joke. It's a bad joke. I understand. I understand. Um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> that was risky. Uh, but uh, it's it's just about you know uh, breaking the ice and then breaking bread. Hopefully someday as well. And I think. If more and more people can hear that, wow, that, that happened and it wasn't so bad, um, and even tough questions were asked and honest answers were given, you know, maybe that, that's how power can be shared because the narrative is shared. Sir, in the red. Assalamu like. alaikum. Um, this is an Islamic greeting that simply means peace be on you. My name is Bilal Bajwa, and my question is to each one of the speakers. Um, and you know, given that the biggest calamity that um, happened to the humankind was the tens of millions of people that died in the World War I and then World War II, and now we have a World War III looming upon us in, through events in, in Syria and some other parts of the world. And we also know that uh, Russia has started to reemerge, and China is starting to assert outside of its boundaries through events in the South China Sea. So if um, and the United States being the world superpower, if the president of our country calls upon you to ask for advice based on what the scripture says, the Old Testament, the New Testament, and the Quran, what would be your advice to the president? Uh, look at the time, gotta go. Thanks for everyone for coming. Appreciate your time. <laughs> I hadn't really prepared for that situation, and I, I doubt it will happen, but thank you for asking, regardless of who wins. Um. Uh, in the event, uh, we already had our first Muslim president. Um. <laughs> All the jokes we can't make. That's <laughs> um, and he didn't call on me, so what are the chances the next one's going to? Um, but if uh, he or she does, um, I think the underlying message will be uh, even uh, uh, what the pastor had spoken about, which is this concept of justice and peace. Uh, that, as you said, with the United States being a superpower, we exert a lot of influence around the world. Um, and we have the opportunity to act in our vested interests or in the interests of the world and world security and safety. And sometimes they're at odds with one another. Um, maybe acting in a certain way will increase our gas prices, but ultimately would be better for the world. Um, and so I, uh, I think that the underlying thing I would suggest is that uh, to have justice as the, uh, as the baseline principle. I mean, that's in the Quran as well. When uh, the Quran uh, speaks to those in authority and says, when you judge between people, judge with justice, the Arabic word adil, and what adil means is not just to be just and fair, but the highest form, the absolute justice. Where in the Quran it says, even if you have to incriminate your own family and uh, and um, and your own people, do so if that's the just thing to do, if that's truthful. Um, and so that's what I would uh, I would suggest is uh, not to just rob people of their resources, not to just find pick and choose our battles because what's best for us, but to be just um, so that we can finally reemerge as just arbiters in, other, in even other people's affairs. Thank you. Well, I would just tell the president okay. to call these guys. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, yes, ma'am. I think Najim has given a mic to this lady here. Oh, yes, this, this, one, I no, this lady and then this lady. I, this woman is, I've tripped over her several times, but I know it's wonderful that y'all are very much. If I could add one thing. I know Najim yes. standing over there is about to start organizing what he calls uh, coffee, cake, and true Islam. <laughs> um, 
it's going to be just basically a weekly open house uh, at, at any center, really, or we could just do it at a coffee shop just to give people an opportunity to talk to somebody who uh, is adherent of Islam. Uh, or if you just want coffee and cake, that's also <laughs> the fastest way to someone's heart through their stomach, right? right? Exactly right. Uh, and so um, another opportunity. looks like there's a lot of great activities going on here in the Fort Worth area. So hopefully people can capitalize on that.